Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1136. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in our last video, we saw how to, saw how to rank from two columns. Here, we have values for temperature from two columns and the values for chicken soup sales from two columns. And we need to calculate correlation. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the statistics here. We just want to see the mechanics of how do you get data from two columns. Now, in our last video, we saw for some statistical functions like rank and small, you just put the two ranges in parentheses. But that's not going to work. Not all functions can do that. So we're going to have to get a little tricky here. Now, there's the calculation for coefficient of correlation. It simply measures strength and direction of a linear relationship. So for example, if we had our data in a single column, our x, which is temperature, and y, which is sales of chicken soup, and we plotted it, we do a scatter chart here. And we could see our dots right there. That means for particular x, here's the y. So it's two numbers, x and y. Now, when the scattered dots tend to move in this direction, it means as x increases, y looks like it's decreasing. That means as temperature increases, it looks like from our data that sales of chicken soup are decreasing. If we get a relationship like this, it's called inverse or negative. So correlation will measure this. We'll get a negative number if our data points tend to be negative. Not only that, but correlation goes from minus 1 to 1. If all of these dots are on our predicted line, line here, it would be perfectly minus 1. If we had our markers going in this direction, for example, we had ad revenue spent and sales for our company. So if, as we increase the ad revenue, our sales for our company went up, that might be direct. And that would be a positive number. All right, so that's a little bit about the statistics. Let's look at the mechanics of how we do this. Now, if we have two columns, it's easy. We can use either the Corel function, array, array. Now, for this particular function, it doesn't matter where the x or y goes and in what order. Other statistical functions, the y has to come first. So I'm going to go ahead and follow that convention and put my y in first comma, and then Array2, that will be our x value. Shift-Enter, that puts the formula in the cell and pushes your cursor up. We can see we get minus 0.83. So it's a pretty strong negative correlation. We could do the same thing instead of with Corel with Pearson. Now, this is cool. They named the function after the guy who invented it. So we're going to do y and then x. Now, it doesn't matter. They both do the same thing. Boom, there we go. But let's go back to this problem. How are we going to get our y's together in array 1? So we want our y's in array 1. Now, last video for rank and small, you just simply, for some statistical functions, comma, you put them in parentheses. But that doesn't work in this function. So we're going to have to get tricky here. We're actually going to make an array calculation with the choose function. Now let's talk about the choose function a second. It is a lookup function, and you give it an index number like 1, 2, 3. And you actually put the values to look up and retrieve in the choose function itself. So check this out. Let's do an example. I'm going to put 2, comma, and then the first item that's possible to look up, I'm going to put rad in double quotes, comma. Notice the value 1 comma, and then the value to the bold argument lights up. We'll put fun. So right now, this function is choose is going to choose fun. So if I highlight this and hit F9, it chooses fun. If I were to change this to 1 and go ahead F9, it would choose the first one, rad. But here's the cool trick. This is an array formula trick. That function argument is expecting a single item, and we're going to give it two items. Array syntax, curly brackets house the array. You can either use a comma, which means column, or semicolon, which means row. But check this out. I just put two, one, two in there. That means get 
the first and second item. So if I F9, that's how we're going to do it. Now, further, the most amazing thing about the choose lookup function is that value, it can be anything. It could be text, number, cell reference, a function, or even a range of values. So I'm going to select the, and it's the Y's we want first. So I'm going to select the first chicken soup and then the second chicken soup. Now, the interesting thing here is it's not going to mash them together one on top of each other like a single column. It's actually going to mash them together this way. So this will be the first column. This will be the second column. If we evaluate this with F9, we can see with array syntax, curly brackets house the array. Comma means column, and semicolon means go down a row. So check this out. It took 3300 and 6500. Boom, boom, and put them in the same row. The comma means go from the first value to the second one in the next column. Comma means go to the next column. That semicolon means go down a row. Now, it's not going to really matter much here. I'm going to Control-Z to undo that. As long as when we do Array 2, it is the same dimensions. Now, when I first uh, tried to do this today, I thought this wouldn't work. But it turns out that if the dimensions of these two things are the same, it spits out this rectangular range that's going to be eight rows by two columns. As long as the second array here is the same size, we're not going to have a problem. All right, so now I'm going to make sure. Notice I got this range. These, these are paired values, x, y, x, y. This would be an x. This would be a y. So I better be sure for the second one that I do it in the same order. I'm going to take that paired uh, x value there. That's value 1, comma value 2 will be broop, close parentheses. Now value 2, I could hit um, F9 to evaluate. And you can see, sure enough, it got number, number in columns, semicolon, go down to the next row. Control Z. Now here's the big moment. Close parentheses and Enter. And sure enough, can you believe that? Now, a lot of array formulas require Control Shift Enter. But if you use what's called an array constant, that means we hard coded the values into the array. Most of the time, you're not going to require it's not going to require Control Shift Enter. So we got away with it. Now I'm going to copy this and do two other little things. Control C. Here I'm just going to change it to the Pearson just to see that that works. And then down here, let's go ahead and hard code the whole thing in there just to check it out. You'd never do this for real. I'm going to hit F9 and leave it hard coded in. And then select Array 2 and F9 and hard coded in. So here we can clearly see 3365. Those are two Ys that are going to be paired with 86 and 37. So if we look up here, 86 and 37. 3300, 6500, those are going to get the correct paired x and y values. All right, that's a little bit about how to do correlation from two separate columns. Hey, if you want to learn more about statistics, I have a lot of videos about statistics. Not only that, but if you don't know about my playlist, if you go to the Excel is Fun YouTube channel, you can look through the playlist. Let's just click on this. The videos that talk about uh, regression and correlation, basic stuff. Videos 87 to 91, but check this playlist out. And I have all sorts of playlists. This is just the one about statistics, right? So there it is, and they're all listed in perfect order. If you wanted to learn basic statistics from the beginning, look at that, all these videos. Boom, all the way. Discrete probability distribution, Poisson distribution, uh, sample, random sample, and then down here we have some basic. Uh, linear regression 87 to 91. So if you don't know about playlists, go check them out. Here's the uh, playlist right here. You can just look through them. There's different ways to look through them. There's the list. All right, we'll see you next video.